Joining me now is a legendary Tony Award winning costume designer, William Ivy Long. Welcome to the show. So great to see you. Thank you. Now, you have had an epic career so far. You've worked on more than 70 Broadway shows, uh, including Hairspray, Chicago, Cinderella, and now the latest one we're super excited about, Diana, A New Musical Story. So out of everything you've done, why does this production mean so much to you? Well, um, well of course, I'm one of those people who got up and watched the wedding at four in the morning and uh, following the fairy tale nature and the dress and all of that, and um, and then, so I was really just a fanboy, I guess, that would be it, or like a royalist fanboy, yeah. until the following happened. Uh, I was in New York, uh, it was the 70s, it was the 80s, I came in 75, and one of my friends was in St. Vincent's Hospital mm -hmm. with, and they didn't know what the disease was, they called it the gay disease, of course that wasn't officially the name, but that's what we call it. And to go visit him, I had to wear hazmat, head to toe, a cap, blue hazmat outfit, you know, gloves, wow. my shoes, those, like you, like you see in movies and yeah. things. It was all blue. And uh, I remember the lady who was the nurse, and she said, don't touch anything. This is, you know, we don't know how can, you know, where the contagion comes from. She actually did talk about it. She said, just don't touch anything. Don't, you know. And of course it was harrowing. I was by myself. I didn't have anybody with me. Just, and I came home and I came home and I saw the photograph of Princess Diana without gloves, shaking the hands of an AIDS patient. And I was just in New York City at St. Vincent's and I was covered in blue plastic. And that was there, the same day. That was the same day. There's so that was that. very, very moving. And I thought, wow. And it just showed me that she was committed to, to uh, opening up people's eyes to this, uh, this, this evil disease. And so that, that was, I said, bravo to you. And I started looking at her in a whole different, a whole different view. And having this different view on Diana, it was very important for you uh, to be a part of this production. And you took a, a, an unusual strategy, I, uh, I hear, to, to land the gig. I don't know how you found this out. But anyway, it's <laughs> oh, totally a little true. told me. A little, a little doggy told me. I think this little the doggy told here. you. Yeah. Uh, He's digging for something. Well, right I here. haven't, in my state and my, my career, I guess we can call it, uh, people call me and they say, oh, we want you to work on this thing. Well, I just read a little blurb in a trade paper that said they were thinking of doing a Princess Diana musical. And I just said, okay, I have to, who's directing it? Who's producing it? And it happened to be a friend of mine that I've done about six shows with, plays, hadn't done a musical with him, Chris Ashley. Uh -huh. And I got to work and I said, Chris, well, immediately I said, I've got to meet with you. Oh, I'm not going to be, I'm in London opening something and I'll be back in two weeks. Well, that gave me two weeks. I said, well, <laughs> I really to want to show you something. Well, of course, I had nothing to show. So I spent two weeks Xeroxing every picture of Princess Diana I, I had. And we put them on the wall and I surrounded my studio with about uh, a thousand photographs of Princess Diana. So when he, between planes, he didn't have, he only gave me an hour and he didn't know what I was gonna show him. I said, I've got something to show you, but we're friends enough, he just, I mean, it could have been a chicken pot pie. I don't yeah. know what he, <laughs> he thought. Uh, and he came down and just, it blew him away. And that was it. And you yes. landed the job just like I that. I did, I did, just like that. Now, there are a lot of people out there who probably think, well, this is the easiest gig in the world. I mean, Diana's done all the work because she's the one who's known for, you know, all these fantastic outfits. She's a fashion icon. Not that simple, right? You've had to make, make some few, a few tweaks. What were the challenges that you have faced bringing Diana's iconic style to the well, stage? Well, a musical, like a play, and I guess not really a film, film is different, but a musical is a poem. It's a dream. It's a dream of reality, because remember people actually, except a few of my friends, people don't go around bursting into song uh, at every <laughs> moment of Maybe crisis or triumph or sadness. They don't burst into song. But um, in the musical world they do, because it becomes musical poetry. So the visuals need to be they need to have a point of view as well. You're not just copying something that was in a paper 
and photographed. Or you can see at Kensington Palace or in the many books of her auction catalog and stuff. It's not that. You're tr you need to help summarize the feeling that we had as viewers of her at that time wearing that look. So you have to, like for instance, the simplest way to say it is the 80s had some pretty dynasty centric shoulder pads. Oh yeah, the shoulder They're pads. a little scary. <laughs> so at all times, because this is an American musical and it's a love affair with Princess Diana, warts and all, strange, horrible things happening to her at every turn, we all identify with it and uh, especially now with a distance yeah. and um, so it's got this glow around it and it's a poetic beautiful glow so we should see her at all times as absolutely ravishing absolutely gorgeous no no strange shoulder pads massive shoulder pads so i have uh, reimagined these classic looks many of them from Catherine walker She's my most frequently ah. quoted, uh, quotable, because uh, I think she was the favorite uh, couturier. Yeah, and... amazing. Now, there are 38 different outfits, I believe, there in the are. Yeah. <laughs> I we did almost, my research. We almost never have to clean them because she doesn't wear them that long. Oh. If you think about a two and, two and a quarter hour show oh, that's divided by 38. That's a lot of outfit changes. That's a lot of changes. Yeah. So you have to tell us, what's your favorite Diana look of all time? I think it's, well, I think I agree with her, and she loved her Elvis look, which is uh, Catherine Walker. Oh, yes, the Elvis And look. I'm just going to do a spoiler alert. Go it's ahead. It's the curtain call look. Ah, okay. And it's full out with tiara and everything. Nice, so we'll get it's that really at the really the end. princess, the princess uh, incarnate right there. Now, I know you can't give away too much about the production, but what can theatergoers expect from Diana, a new musical story? It's beautifully written. Uh, it's, a, it's a psychological character study. We're seeing a young girl, an 18-year-old, when they first meet until the very end. And we see her grow and we see her suffer and, try and ultimately, of course, triumph because she is, she's changed the face of not just the monarchy, what do we know from America about the monarchy, but humans' responsibility toward other humans. Right. And I think that is what she really will be known for. And it's a somewhat edgy take on Diana's oh, life. Oh, it's so dangerous. It? It's oh, very edgy. Oh, tell us edgy. about that. How oh, dangerous are we Oh, my goodness. Guessing? It's a minefield because <laughs> everyone's still alive except for Princess Diana. So you want, to get the, you want to get these character choices and these scenes just right. Because now with hindsight, which of course is 2020, you realize there are no villains. They're people with extraordinary situations and inherited behavioral traits, all mixed together that were just brick wall after brick wall. And now with her children uh, marrying and having more realistic lives, although fraught, fraught, fraught. Oh, yes. Fraught. A um, fraught right now. It just makes us understand more. So we're seeing this in 2020, and we're looking at all of her, uh, the, as I said, the awful things that happened to her, the lack of great education at the beginning, like girls don't go to school. I mean, what? And uh, then 12 dates, and she marries this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot that you look at back and say, oh my, that was the Middle Ages. Wow. So we have to make sure that the songs and the, the scenes that tell this story are spot on without finger pointing and that they're psychological. You can see several sides at once.